Hello everybody, Genesis Losing here. Uh, before the video starts, I do want to discuss just real quickly that if you would like to know the plot of these characters, if they have a plot like this episode does, I would argue for you to go to Amazon.com. Uh, this not really that sponsored, but I guess I'll just say it is. This is pseudo-sponsored by Amazon.com, where I purchased my copy of Atlantis. Um, if you would like to purchase it, there will be a link below to Amazon.com to the most recent DVD of Atlantis. Hello, Disney fans. Genesis Lewis in here, as always, and we are about to do another Disney characters you may not know, episode 31, Milo Fett. Milo James Thatch is the protagonist of Disney's greatly underrated, underrated 2001 animated feature film, Atlantis, The Lost Empire. And it's 2003 direct-to-video sequel that's kind of more or less just a pilot for a TV show, Atlantis, Milo's Return. He serves as a linguist and cartography expert who directs the expedition to find the lost continent of Atlantis. Having been orphaned by a railway accident in 1885, Milo Thatch was raised by his raised by and educated by his grandfather, Thaddeus Thatch, who is a well-known archaeologist who did diplomatic missions to several different countries um, and was involved in what's called the Georgetown Incident. But regardless, Milo took after his grandfather with regard to his affinity and passion for language and antiquities, graduated from Buford Beaumont High School at age 11, accepted and declined admissions to Harvard, Yale, and Princeton. Eventually, he enrolled in Oxford uh, University in 1896. He tried out for the rowing team in 1899, but was rejected. The archery team in 1900, but was rejected. And the cricket team in 1901, and rejected. The only two teams he made was the debate team in 1900, accepted, and the chess team in 1902, which he was also accepted. Now, a little development about the character, because I do enjoy development. This is one of the first time. The development of Milo as a hero was a difficult one for the filmmakers. Heroes, in general, have been widely regarded as the least interesting for animators to work on. So, the filmmakers sought to develop Milo as a character with a great deal of personality. There was a very early concept in the film that Milo was the descendant of Blackbeard, the pirate. But that was abandoned in favor of Milo discovering his inner self and love for exploration, rather than his inner pirate. The supervising animator of Milo was the great John Pomeroy. We'll discuss him later in the video. Pomeroy had the unique challenge of trying to figure out what li linguists look like, and according to Mark Okren, who developed the Atlantean language for the film, Pomeroy used Okren as a basis for the design of the character. Pomeroy has also noted that Milo is the closest to his business, his business in 30 years of the animation industry, that Pomeroy made a self-portrait of himself. Because Milo appeared in virtually every scene in the film, he was one of the few characters that required an entire team of animators working under Pomeroy. Michael J. Fox provided the voice of Milo. Fox reportedly had to decide between this and the film, this film, and the well-known film Titan A.E. by Don Bluth, and left it to his son to decide. Apparently his son is more a Disney fan than a Bluth fan. <laughs> it happens. Fox enjoyed not having to worry about the way he looked and could do what he needed to be done by contorting himself in order to get the right voice. Co-director Gary Trousdale noted that Fox, despite being in his late 30s at the time, could still project the youthful 20-year-oldness of young Milo. For the first time in Disney characters you may not know history, I'm actually not going to give you a play-by-play -play of his appearance in his said movie. This is specifically because I would like to put out a hand and say to go watch the movie yourself. The name of the movie is Disney's Atlantis, The Lost Empire, 2001. Go buy it on DVD, Blu-ray, or if you're still an old fan like me, go get it on VHS. At any rate, let's continue on. Milo Thatch did appear at Disneyland and Disney World during the time when the movie was first released. Milo and Kida, uh, who go watch the movie to find out, appeared in a Katek-inspired car. 
Disney stars and motor cars before their float was replaced after a few years. The characters themselves disappeared from the parks completely after the film's release. Now let's have some fun facts. According to the two-disc DVD collection that came for the movie later on, before falling in love and marrying Kida, Milo's first love was some woman named Lisa McGrath. Uh, Milo's complaint about how much he does not like carrots after puking over the ship used to launch the Ulysses could be a reference to how much Michael J. Fox hates carrots because, well, he's allergic to it. And Fox most likely ad-libbed the line. It wasn't supposed to be in the original script. Milo's decision to remain in Atlantis at the end of the film was actually better for him since, if you look at the date, the film takes place in 1914 when World War I was already about to get started. It would be inevitable for him to be drafted into the army, and since Milo is very much pacifist than, you know, you know, a militarist, it's... I'm taking the idea that if Milo was to go back to the surface, he probably wouldn't have liked the next mm, four or five years. Milo's fighting during his final confrontation with Roars was actually based on Jackie Chan's. Weird, huh? Finally, the well, not last well-known fact is that Milo is actually the 11th king of Atlantis after marrying Kida, who was a princess, later queen, of Atlantis. Alrighty, so I referenced I would bring up who the heck is John Pomeroy? Well, John Pomeroy is a Disney animator. He is a well-known Disney animator for working on several Disney films, including Winnie the Pooh and Tigger 2, The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, The Rescuers, Pete's Dragon, The Small One, Pocahontas, Fantasia 2000, Atlantis, duh, Treasure Planet, and finally, Planes. Being involved in all of these is quite an extensive career. Heck, he's been in the industry since 1973. So, you can understand. At the current moment, he's actually working on the Dragon Slayer Dragon Slayer movie with Don Bluth and Gary Goldman. Yeah, another tie back to what I said earlier. But it's apparent that hopefully, you know, that movie gets all the ground because I'm going to go see it. But I just want to give a little more details on who John Pomeroy was. Maybe later in the Disney characters you may not know series, even though they're not characters, I might include a few real life people. I don't know. Anyway, peace out, Disney fans. And wait for the next video, which, oh, should I let you know who it's about? Hmm. I feel like she wouldn't like that, but what's she going to do? Pick on me? She's all the way in Hawaii. That's your character hit, and peace out.